Hi, evening. I just have to go and make an open disclosure here. I haven't slept for 36 hours in the army, so I'm going to be quite zoned out. So don't mind me if I actually ramble, okay? So I'm just going to do it as best as I can. So, yes, I'm Nicholas Chan. I am a guy that actually did not grow up in a well-to-do family, okay? I pretty much started uh, like that, like a worm. I mean, I always liked the fact that why is right. One of the ugliest things you see, and most people say, ugh, it's so disgusting, it's a worm. That was very much the kind of impression I was getting when I was young. My father was a policeman, my mother was a clerk. There's nothing very special about me. I went to secondary school as an N-level student, okay? Five years back then, just normal, that's only normal, no academic. So I actually had to go and work during the time before I was even in secondary school. My parents weren't doing too well. They actually had to take up extra jobs. And because of that, I actually had to stay at my own grandparents' place, my auntie's place, and even because of that stay, I had to actually work for my auntie to go and pay for my food and my lodging. Yeah. It paid me $20 a month okay, while my parents were trying to make a living back then. And occasionally, I'll visit them at their own store, a food store selling vegetarian food. And that was when I was trying to go and like, say, how come life is so hard? In order to make ends meet, I actually went on to go and tell my auntie, look, could I do some more stuff for you guys? So she said, sure. She actually allowed me to go and make plastic bags, those plastic bags that you guys have when you buy drinks, okay? Do those kind of stuff, and the kind of gifts you have for your gifts, uh, like those pens, still screening, those kind of stuff. I got paid like something like 10 bucks a week for doing that. And I started to go and wonder, like, why is it such a chore to try to live? This little gentleman here, wise, is someone that's close to my heart. One of the first jobs I actually had was being a sweeper at Snow City. I recognized then that that was the only job I could get when I was 13 years old. That was the only thing I can do while I tried to survive. Okay? I did jobs that earned me anywhere from like three to five bucks doing this, carrying, I mean, you guys, have you seen what's a TV, those big glass boxes? where you carry those, I used to go and carry those big glass panels for Asahi, okay, from a panel box down here, and put them onto a conveyor line for 16 hours a day, seven days a week, during my school holidays, just to try to go and pay for my new uniform and new school books. I also worked at Hopa Villa to try and tear tickets for you guys when you enter in. All of these different, different things I did when I was young, even to the point that I was actually hired by, I think, AT and TGIS. It was one of the world's biggest communication company. All of this was done before I turned 16. And I asked myself, I said, okay, why am I doing all this for? It's just for money. Trying to go and make a living and wondering, is that all that I have to go and do? When I realized that in the end, money was extremely hard to come by, I was trying to exchange my time, and because one, when you have enough money, you can't pay for enough food. You can't pay for enough food, you become skinnier, you become more unhealthy, and then you don't look particularly good. Then you can't get a job as a banker. Okay? So, yes. So, that's why I never became a banker. But, yes. I never had the first world problem of like, oh my goodness, there's so much good food in Singapore. Where do we go and eat? No, we have no idea. I, if I could get a meal okay, in front of me, I'll be so happy. I used to live off one meal a day, just a packet of rice, and duck sauce from this store somewhere behind at Bona Vista. And I just said, Uncle, one packet of rice with sauce, please, is 30 cents. I used to do that for a simple reason. I got whatever I earned from my part-time jobs. My parents gave me a dollar a day to survive. I saved what I could, everything I saved. And back in the old days when we actually had non-aircon buses, I used to just wait for the non-aircon bus to come so I could save that 10 cent. Everything I saved. To the point I touched 16, I got my first $500 saving. And that $500 was what I used to form my first company, SCN Technologies, on 21st May 1996. This watch you see was bought with my partner. He has another watch that's the same, and we still wear the same watch. This signifies the first time we went to business. And honestly, why is something we're very proud of, okay? And let me explain why they even bothered going that path of all this junk, junk, junk work to go and running a business, okay? I was a normal stream student, okay? 
I finished my O-levels in five years, and um, by some chance, I got into my ninth out of 12 choice in Singapore Polytechnic, studying a diploma in film, oh, sorry, in electronics, computer communications. And during that time, I was running my company, okay, doing two part-time jobs. Okay, was working for Palm Beach Seafood, another one, and studying full-time. All of this went on swimmingly. At the end of the first year, okay, I was kicked out of Singapore Polytechnic, not because I couldn't juggle my work and studies, but because I failed just one topic. That topic was engineering maths. And the thing is that I did well for the rest of everything else, but that doesn't matter. I got A's and B's for everything else. It doesn't matter. One failure two times means game over for you. And that was what it was for me because I was thinking, oh, crap, now I actually have a company that's one year old. I can't get into the army yet. Not now. So I had to find a way to stay in school. I went over, I walked over to the, I think, Block 21 in Singapore Polytechnic and, said, and told the dean, I want to talk to you. I want to tell you why you should get me in your course. I have a business. I have did many jobs. I will be a great student for you. He told me, no, sorry, man. Your grades doesn't count. It matters not whether you have the ability, nor the aptitude, nor the desire. Your grades doesn't count. And that was pretty much the case of what happened for me. So what did I do next? During that time <coughs> when I was actually, well, in school, secondary school, and going to polytechnic, I got to know some people. Okay, I got to know a lecturer from Nia Polytechnic in the School of Film and Media Studies because I helped out in their film work. And he told me, you know, look, if you want to come into poly after your school, sure, by all means. And I just told him, nah, I'm fine. So after this little lesson and realizing that I cannot go anywhere, okay, the formal route, I decided to realize that the knowing people route, the business way of negotiating and building a relationship is the way to go forward. So. I was able to ask him, hey, look, could you just get me into the direct admission exercise this year before I fail and get kicked out? He said, sure. And because of that simple thing he told me, he said, but Nick, it's going to be a written test. It's going to be an interview to check on your ability. Nothing to do with your grades, but on your ability. I said, I'm perfectly fine with it. And that was one of the greatest lessons I learned, that the meritocratic approach in looking at us, okay, what we can do right, rather than our grades, was the way forward, right? on top of everything else I thought in business. Eventually, I got admitted into Nian Polytechnic. I graduated with a diploma in 2000. However, that happiness of getting a diploma was short-lived because I got, well, army to go to after that. But more than just that, I realized that I was trapped in this diploma I had when I was graduated. Um, TCS wasn't very, very much the place to hire, and everywhere else wasn't hiring much. And therefore, I realized that in the end, what I've gotten myself into was effectively a funnel and a dead end. I couldn't go any further because I couldn't go overseas to study. I mean, to, to, to study and I couldn't go overseas to work because that's the way forward for the media industry. Because I had no money, even with my companies running, I didn't make enough to study that much. So, <coughs> that's me on a ship, by the way. So, I just realized because I was consistently limited in almost every part of my life, no brains, no money, no looks. <laughs> Basically, he said, wholesale. <laughs> so the thing is that why I just realized I can only do this if I take it into my own hands. And from all the part-time jobs I worked at Wise, right, the most common trait that came in was I can create value for society and get paid for it, paid a profit for it. And it was more a matter of realizing that entrepreneurship is the only way to go because when you have no other way, it becomes the way forward, where it becomes the great equalizer, where it does not matter if you are male, female, black, white, Malay. It matters not your race, your religion, your gender. All that matters is whether you're willing to go and create value, okay, serve your customers, and be smart and shrewd enough to go and make a profit to become successful because the market determines whether you are fit to be one. And this choice, this simple choice in my life, because I was put into a corner, what made me able to say that, look, I am now able to help my family get out of my financial situation. Because if I was to adopt the other choice, which was to get my diploma, my degree, get a job and climb on the corporate ladder, just won't happen. Just can't happen. And sometimes this ability to be shoehorned into a corner right, works well to bring out the true nature of yourself. Because since my youth, I had, had my mouth autism, don't mind me. 
which affected me and how I can interact with you guys. It still affects me a bit, looking at all of you guys looking at me. Okay? Coupled with the fact that um, I didn't really have, um, I wasn't really good at sports and wasn't really good at anything else, it was, it didn't help when I tried to apply in corporates and they told me, oh no, your degree can't make it, oh, I don't think you're up to it. And realizing that you're actually getting sh given the short end of the stick for so many other matters. So when the opportunity came for me to run my business and to start a business, when I first had a chance, I jumped at it. Because I had nothing in my hands, therefore I have nothing to lose. The first company I formed, as I mentioned, in 21st May 1996, with this watch I have on my hand, was the first business I ran with my classmate, Benjamin Soon. He and his father, I mean, his father actually helped us register the company because back then, we weren't so lucky to have an 18-year-old director um, you know, to register for a company. We just had to wait, and we were 16 years old. We can't do anything. And therefore, it's like, you know, if you can't find a proper way, make a way. So this mentor, Okay, the, my, my friend's father actually guided us all the way. Of course, he ran his own business, he ran his own venture capital firm, which in a sense bled onto what I actually did myself in the end. So the different companies I formed after that, iFoundries, which was a consulting firm, who works around you, Singapore's first location-based dating company, to the company I invest in today, like Maelstrom, Singapore's first military simulation paintball company. All of this was all when you re I realized that there's actually greater value and what could be done and the possibilities of what can be done was when I realized that this is the way forward as an entrepreneur. We never stand still, we will not stand still, and we will consistently find a way to make life better for each and every one of you guys and get paid for that. Okay? And I'm saying that you guys are all blessed because one of you will walk out of this room eventually having $100,000, right, to start your business. I had to scrounge and save for like four years to even get my 500 bucks because there was no grants back then. This, in a sense, is something which I hope that you can probably take back for yourself, that if you were able to go and actually recognize that you are put in a position which you can do a lot, lot more, rather than actually saying that I have 100K, what, how can I find more money to go and spend more things on? So I will just finalize on this little thing. On a, as my journey went along, I realized as an entrepreneur, the best thing you could ever have right, is to try to go and imagine yourself, right, as a photographer using a film camera. As a film camera, you only take one type of film, ISO 100, 200, 400, whatever you want. You put in, you load in, you've got 20, 24 shots, 36 shots, you have to make it count. You wait, you prep, and you actually be able to stare and take a shot. Nowadays, many people do take the cameras, shot, 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 shot. There is never the desire to say, I must make it happen, and I must make it happen once. I have to be careful. Now it's like, you know, just taking everything as what we have and we don't really care. So I'll leave you with these final words on myself. On my, on myself is that I will ask you if you were penniless, like myself, if you had completely empty pockets and no food, no jobs, no love, just nothing. If you were penniless, how badly would you want to be wealthy? If pushing your imagination to your limits will give you hope, would you do it? If there was an opportunity, would you seize it and let anything stand in your way? Would you really care if people mocked you, laughed at you, pointed at you, and badmouthed you? Would you really be concerned only about your extreme goal or just embrace the extreme work? Would you just be having your ambition requiring you to learn, to, tr to learn hurt, trust pain, and embrace the, your daily struggles? Would you still be concerned about being realistic? That's how we define realistic. Would you still want to figure out your odds and calculate your chances? If you had spent more time planning your future and less time on Facebook and Instagram, would it even be a tough choice? If by your responsibility you will face humility and pain, would you go for it? If by your hard work you have to look foolish, would you risk it? If you needed to fight to survive, would you start swinging? If we needed to go and do things you think you can't do, would you even try? Because if you really, really want to succeed, choose to be penniless and do whatever it takes to succeed. Because if you don't, you're just poor anyway. Thank you. <laughs>